Hey guys, over the course of the next three weeks, I'm going to be sharing with you 12 killer qualifying questions that you should be asking your new potential clients. It's going to help you avoid those bad clients that you wish you never would have picked up in the first place. So if you are about to get started with your holiday client onboarding process where you're doing a huge push to get new clients for the holidays, this is a great video to watch. These next three videos are going to be amazing for you to watch. Um, I don't even know if I'm gonna wait three whole weeks. I might drop them in a row, like three days in a row. Who knows? Um, that means you have to be subscribed and ready to watch them. So. Without further ado, let's get to today's video and then make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell because I might be popping these puppies out over the next three days. Who knows? I don't know. Just gotta be, you gotta be on board. If you have not watched my video on the five stages of bossing or five stages of entrepreneurship, then I will link that down in the description below because it is worth watching. Not everyone is in the same stage of bossing that you are. And if you're like me, you may get trapped in the whole idea of just wanting to help people and anyone who comes to you. But believe me, that is not the right path to take, friend. So if you are interested in learning about how to really qualify the people that you're working with, I've got 12 killer questions for you. So stick around. Okay. All right, now I have had issues with this in the past before and I've had clients who have had issues with this, this very situation where they bring on a client and they're all excited to have them. They picked up the wrong dollar. I don't know if you've ever seen Dr. Phil, but he talks about this when he's counseling married couples. If you marry for money, you will earn every penny. I believe that is absolutely the truth when it comes to bringing on new clients. If you just take any and everybody, you are going to earn every dime you make. But if you are strategic and qualify your clients, you will have a much easier go of it. And so these 12 killer qualifying questions are going to help you start to really funnel or filter through who is approaching you for business. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't work with people that you don't get along with or anything like that. What I'm saying is qualifying them on the level of service you provide is going to save you a lot of time, energy, and effort, a lot of stress, a lot of overwhelm, and a lot of frustration. Okay, let's dive into the very first one. Okay, so the very first question that you should ask a potential client is, what are you currently doing to solve your problem? Now, I'm not gonna go in any particular order with these questions. Um, you'll have to decide which ones are most important to you, but I think these are 12 killer questions that you should not leave out when you are onboarding new clients. So the first one is, what are you currently doing to solve your problem? Why do I think you should ask that question? Number one, you are, a, you are making them think about the reason they came to you in the first place. So you are establishing a foundation of expertise where they are recognizing that they have a current situation that they cannot solve themselves and that prompted them to come to you. So that is going to lay a foundation for you to then be able to come in and understand where you are starting with them. Once they've answered this question, you'll know sort of what sort of hole they're in and exactly what you need to do to help them get out of the hole. But at the same time, it's also establishing to them that they couldn't solve the problem on their own and they had to come to you for a reason. So it's laying a foundation. Okay. Question number two that I think you should ask is how did you find out about me? Now, why is this question important? Number one, if they found out about you from a previous client, that will help you determine sort of what their expectations of your ability to help them is. And it also sort of helps you understand the type of person they are because we hang around like-minded individuals and they will have a certain level of expectations that you will recognize based on who they say referred them. So you definitely wanna know how they found out about you. If they found out about you via any social media marketing that you have done or any marketing promotions that you have run, that is analytical data that you can then use when you are going to you know, consider promoting that particular product or service again, you'll know that it works. So asking them how they found out about you is a great way to manage expectations, but also to understand analytics and data 
that you can use later on. So I don't think you should leave this question out. Okay, another question is how do you prefer to communicate? Now, I have had clients who have worked with people and there has been a huge roadblock because the communication was horrible. They were texting instead of emailing. There was no documentation because they were phone calls instead of an email, all types of things. And people were frustrated because they did not seem professional, right? They, they felt like um, the person they were working with before was not professional and that everything was kind of up in the air and they didn't really have any, any kind of solid foundation for their working relationship. So understanding how people like to communicate so that you can prepare. Remember, becoming the CEO of you is all about understanding what you need to do and be your best. So understanding what other people are doing helps you to create a plan for yourself to cover your tracks. So if someone says that they primarily communicate via texts, then you know that you will, well, if it were me, I would send the text so that they were communicated with the way they want to be communicated with, but I would follow that text up with an email so that there was a paper trail that they Um, that you have for yourself. So I might send the email and then send the text saying the same thing, saying, please check your email because I sent an email referring to this very matter. So understanding how other people communicate is going to help their experience with you be better, but it's also going to help you do it be your best in the situation so that you're giving them what they want, but you're covering your tracks as well, if that makes sense. Also, understanding how other people like to communicate helps you manage your time a little bit better because you'll know if they prefer to meet in person, let's say, um, then they, you know that you have to allot time for that inside of the project that you're working on. And if it were me, I'll say that, is that I will establish check-in points so that I controlled on my calendar when we met. If it were Zoom or whatever it is, I can control that. But I also can manage my calendar and my time and get the way I operate within this project kind of wrapped around how I need it to be done as well. So that's why it's important for you to understand how these, how your client wants to communicate with you so that you can prepare the best way for you to operate within that project and manage that project and do and be your best at the same time. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, let's move on to number four. Again, these are not in any particular order. I'm just kind of making sure that I remember where I am in the questions. Okay, number four, do you have a support staff? Okay, the reason you're asking this question is because you may not always be talking to the decision maker in the midst of the project you're working on. You may be working with their marketing department or their Um, graphics department or their IT department or whatever it is, but the people you're working with are not the ones that are going to be making final decisions. They're the ones that are going to navigate you throughout the project. They have various components that deal with the project that you have to work with them, but ultimately the decision maker is someone else. So you need to understand if there is a support staff and how the structure or the organization structure of that relationship works within their company so that you then will know exactly who to communicate with, when to communicate with them, how communication needs to be done, and sort of the time frame that things are going to happen. And we'll get to another question that deals with this a little bit later on. So I think knowing if there is a support staff is going to be another killer qualifying question that you can ask your onboarding clients, the client you're onboarding. Okay. All right. That does it. I felt these, these 12 killer qualifying questions are important because we're getting to the point in the year where we're either going to have to onboard new people to help us with our projects. And we've got so many projects to do, or we're looking to bring on new clients um, for the end of the year. And we want to start looking at starting that uh, process and bringing in some of those people in our sales funnel, but we need to qualify them first because every dollar is not a good dollar. And like Dr. Phil said, if you pick up the wrong one, you will earn every penny. So if you want more help understanding what you need to do and be your best, this is the perfect time to get on the wait list for my program, Project CEO, where I'm teaching you how to be the chief executive officer of you so that you can leverage yourself and that knowledge across so many platforms, including onboarding new clients, creating amazing marketing strategies, being the absolute best leader you can be for your organization or your company if you're climbing the corporate ladder, or just being the best friend, parent, 
coworker because you are leading as a person, whichever, whichever one that is, get on the wait list for Project CEO. If you have not already hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell so you never miss an episode and leave a comment. Tell me how you are onboarding clients. If you've had an experience with a bad client and you wish you never would have picked up that dollar, I want to hear about it in the comments. Again, be sure to follow me over on Instagram, doing some things over there. And LinkedIn is a great place. Join me over on LinkedIn. All of my social media is down in the description. And I will see you again next week. Bye.